marriage of his day. And there wasn't anything actually expensive about it. He had like this that had stuff coming out of him, like the eyes buzzing around him, and the hair was coming out of his head. But this is what law specializes. He do all these things as t-shirts and decals, and he'd show up at car shows, and he would actually paint with an airbrush on his shirt, and he could buy it for like 10 bucks. And this guy was like my Jesus. He was like, God, you know, when you're a certain age and you're a boy, stuff like this is just what you, you crave. And he, had, he did have his own comic book, but he really had nothing to do with it. But um, he was like this icon. I don't know if you noticed, but he's on those, of those uh, uh, boxes of the, uh, for the model kits. His face was on all of them. I mean, we knew who this guy was. And he's the kind of guy that our parents definitely wouldn't want us to see. Mm -hmm. Now here's the story. I love this guy so much, and I went and met him at a couple of car shows, like so found his address. And my parents and I were in Los Angeles, and they said, I'm the only child, so I actually got a boat sometimes. <laughs> and I said, what do you want to do? Go to Disneyland? You want to go to Pacific Ocean Park? What do you want to do? But I want to go see Big Daddy Roth. He lives on Swanson Avenue over in Maywood, <laughs> which was a pretty rough neighborhood. So they drive me over there. I said, well, there it is. Go on in. <laughs> and I'm like, okay. They, they were really smart about just like dropping me into the pool and things like that. <laughs> and uh, the receptionist, who I found out later was Robert Williams' wife. Oh, they just weren't married yet. Suzanne, yeah. yeah. Um, and he did all the ads for Roth, too. I think I put one of those in here. There we go. Yeah. These ads fascinated me because they were just so weird. I mean, that thing on the end, the edge there, I don't know what it even is. It's like a, like a hobby for its head, but like some, like a turtle shell. I mean, just, but anyway, these shirts were such a big deal. I can't possibly underestimate it. So anyway, I don't think that he, he just left. I'm going to have to come back. I come back, I've got a bunch of drawings. I'm probably 13 years old. He spends about a half hour taking me around, showing me the cars, looking at my art, thanks me, sends me on my way. Two weeks later, because I had my address on the back of some of the art I left with, he sends me a letter thanking me for coming by. Now this was when he was at the peak of his popularity. I help kids out all the time because of people like him. I've never written a kid that I tried to help a letter thanking them. But I'm not, in, I'm not unusual. I know lots of cartoonists my age. B.K. Taylor, the guy that used mm. to do the Appletons for the uh, Lampoon, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. he was the same way, and he wound up doing those odd rod cars. Oh, in fact, there's all the story yeah. there that we will talk about. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> uh, yeah, I was going to be the art director on the revival of Odd Rod, but he was going to come back, but that never happened. By the way, as a cartoonist or an artist, Please be aware right now, when you get to be my age, your list of things that almost happened will be longer <laughs> than the list of <laughs> That's just the way it goes. Anyway, um, um, oh, this was, this was another key thing, because the guy that actually <coughs> did the art, Ed, Ed wasn't that great a cartoonist, but like Walt Disney, he understood who to hire. And Ed was really influenced. See the eyes? Those aren't breasts. Those are <laughs> eyes. And they're, they're there because he was fascinated by Tex Avery, who you'll see later with the big eyes popping out of the cartoon character's head. But with this thing, this guy named Ed Newton drew this, because I guess they needed a filler. They had an extra page. They just, it was a coloring book that was just all these black and white t-shirt designs. But man, it was like my new Bible. But this, made me realize, oh yeah, look how you get the volume to that head by putting the edge of the mouth way back there. And this is how you go to here. This is like this like was the key and I've done many, many jobs in the style of Ed Roth. But uh, here's one of them. <laughs> I used to work do a lot of work for a company called Rhino Entertainment. And the Warner Brothers bought them and it, it's now been dissolved. It's part of their stomach line. But, uh, <laughs> corporate speaking, anyway. 
but, but the oversized tires, the, the, the smoke, the flames, the sizzling in the flame, I mean, the way the, the, the car is torqued out. Uh, and, and the funny thing is, Rhino asked for this, and then they went, uh, he didn't change his face so it looks like they went up in the corner. That might scare people. <laughs> and I said, you asked for Ed Roth. Ed Roth is, is, is you know, kind of edgy. So this was the printed version. The printed version, I had to go back in and put the 1990s head on it, and I could piss everything. <laughs>